tuning in to the Loser Kid Pinball Podcast. We're on episode 135. I'm Josh Roop. With me, as always, my co-captain. Scott Larson. And I can't and, believe I messed that up last week. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> last you know, it's, it's all good. Hey, uh, <laughs> but don't you have a game coming here, Josh? I just got the call from FedEx this morning. Anywhere from 12 to 4 at my house on Monday. So Ooh. I'm excited. Jaws Premium bought it from Flipping Out. Hey, if you guys are a buy from Flipping Out, Tell Zach to stuff one of these shirts. If you're on YouTube, you can st- have him tell him, I want a flipping out shirt, and he will put one in the box. No, for I, I've got I like, have mine upstairs. I totally, I, I, I should have put it on for tonight. You're you're representing. I feel bad. No, I, I think I, this, I, I'm not going to lie. This is like my first time representing flipping out on the, on the stream, on the video. <laughs> well, I do wear the shirt. I just, yeah. uh, you know, I have a lot. I have a lot of pinball shirts. My wife actually wears this shirt a lot more than I do. She steals it all the time. So she represents flipping out. And honestly, she's better looking than me, so people are going to look at that shirt a lot more on her than on me. It's probably true. It's probably true. But But yeah, Jaws, I'm excited. Uh, And And it's the premium. You got the premium? It is the premium. Yeah. So So why did you choose the premium? So I played the Pro, and don't get me wrong, the Pro is a good game. It's a fun Mm -hmm. game. But I played the premium, and it just felt next level. It made the premium, or the Pro feel like it was... Like a location game? Yeah, like a location game. Something about, you know, I thought it would be kind of silly, the the shark coming out and like, it's only like a one hit wonder, right? Like mm-hmm. no, no pun intended or whatever. Uh, but no, that shark adds some depth, adds some uh, str- strategy there. It, it's really cool. And it's, it's, I like the expansion of rules that Keith is doing and it feels more akin to a Godzilla rule set than anything okay. else he's done. And so And I like the, so the thing I really like, I don't know if anyone out there has played Jaws premium yet, but I really like, well, it's on the pro too, uh, the bounty hunts. So you can start a bounty hunt and it's playing in the background. So it's like, get so many pop bumpers, get so many spinners hits, you know, get so many ramps. Yeah. And and tell tell everybody, remind everybody who haven't played it. What do the bounties do? So the bounties give rewards and they say on the screen what they are, but you can kind of. Like if you complete a bounty, you get like 40 million points, depending on the difficulty of the bounty you go for. Okay. But you're going after sharks. And so it's cool that you can uh, have that running while you're doing a mode or you're playing a multi-ball or it's something that I usually go for the bounty hunts first to get them going. So they're playing, they're, they're working, uh, they're playing around in the background while I'm playing the rest of the game, essentially. So if you haven't played a Jaws, I highly recommend it. I'm seeing... Someone was saying that, that Jaws is nowhere near what Godzilla is. And and I think it's hard to compare because it's it's two different layouts. Like we're going for different concepts and stuff like that. I still think the genius is there. I just I feel like we kind of get this weird it's I don't know if it's it's the community lately or what, but it feels like a lot of people want to hate pinball <laughs> or hate what it's become. <laughs> and I don't mm. I don't get it. It's so. it, it's easier to channel negative energy. I, the, the bottom True. line, it, it happens every time a game comes out. It tends to be, uh, it tends to be, you know, if you're in th- into statistics, it's a bimodal yeah. distribution where people are either all in or all out. Yeah. Like the, there are very few like middle of the ground things. And I, I would say I have played Josh. I have played Jaws. I have not played Josh on Jaws, but I have played Jaws. I did play the the Pro though. I didn't have a chance to play the Premium, and I thought it was fun. It was one yeah. of those things where I'm like, you know what, this game could definitely grow on me. I didn't love it uh, as in like best game ever, but yeah. to be fair, I didn't I didn't feel that way about Godzilla or even Medieval Madness the first time I played those. Yeah, it takes a while to say okay. What is the last ability? And that's what makes it a great game. And I think this game has a lot of last ability. I, I just, I feel something special when I was playing the premium and I just I had a smile on my face. It, it felt, it felt fun. And so, okay. and, and here's the other problem too, right? Like there's how many people in this hobby? There's, there's tens, hundreds of thousands of people. Right. Because there's five dudes complaining on Pinside or complaining on right. Facebook. It's the whole squeaky wheel situation. Based off the numbers of who listened to Keith, I mean, we had over 8,000 listens on that episode. Yeah. So people are excited for this, and it's definitely moving units. Like the yeah. um, other games that are coming into distributors or setting while Jaws, Jaws just had its second run of pro and premium, 
and I don't know of many that are sitting in stock. Maybe the pros, but the premiums, all all the distributors I talked to said they're literally literally coming in the door and going, going shipping out. out to yeah. So uh, there's it, it's a great game. If you haven't played it, find one. Find and especially now that there's more premiums out there, find a person and hit them up. Say hey, I want to come play the game. <laughs> okay, and uh, and if you want to order it, call Zach and Nicole. Flip out pinball. They definitely. They've, uh, They've definitely helped us out. Now, I'm going to go a little bit out of order. I know we have uh, our notes, but I want to, since we're already talking about Jaws, I want to jump into the modding of Jaws. So the one thing I do want to talk about, um, the Stumbler mod that it was announced. And so if if you're unfamiliar with Stumbler, uh, great guy. I'm like, you've been under a rock. Well, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, if you're listening to us, then you have to be at least familiar with with the mods. So he released a buoy mod, which looks really great. I mean, he uh, he's known. I I would say he burst onto the scene with the Tokyo Neon sign mod for Godzilla. Yes. Now yes. he also has a couple other things for Godzilla. He has the Lolly UFO mod for Godzilla the subway building for Godzilla and the noodle bar. Now these aren't, these are high end mods. Yeah. This is not some person printing them out on a 3d printer. This is, a, these are high end mods and, and you are paying a premium for them, yes. but they look amazing. So if amazing. you haven't seen it, go and look at the jaws buoy of death mod and Josh, what do you think about this mod? Is this something that you're interested in putting in your game? Okay, so here, this is how I feel about mods. I feel okay. like they're unnecessary for pinball machines. I feel okay. like they're they're eye candy, right? Like, yeah, okay, um, yeah. okay, unnecessary or not essential. I, I I would frame it as non essential, but go okay. ahead. They're non essential. I am not much of a mod believer. Uh, okay, all the games behind me excluding Godzilla. Don't look at it. <laughs> they don't have mods. I've had world cup soccer for almost a decade now. Okay. I've never modded the game. I just, I, I don't see really a point. I get the bling yada yada. Stumbler has made me a believer in mods. He is next level. Like mm-hmm. the man is insane when it comes to mods. I have, uh, I have the Tokyo sign mod. Mm-hmm. I have the, the lollipop ramp or not lollipop noodle bar mod mm-hmm. and I'm on order for it's called the subway mod, but yeah, but it's, it's the other building on the opposite side. Yeah. So it's subway your, building uh, mod. So basically Godzilla has four possible mods, which yes. by the way, I mean, okay. These aren't cheap. The, no. the Godzilla, the lolly UFO mod is 177. The Neo, uh, the, Tokyo neon sign is 228. The subway building is 304. And, yeah. and the buoy the death is 295. Oh, so yes. you're yes. looking at a thousand dollars in mod to make it look very pretty, by the way, you, you are yes. making it look very pretty, very pretty. And honestly, I, I feel like it elevates the looks of this game. I know that sounds okay. stupid. Cause I'm like, I'm like, I don't hate mods, but you know, looking at Stumbler stuff and I agree with you. I feel like Stumbler has been, he was on the scene, but mm-hmm. when the Tokyo, Tokyo sign came out, it was like, this man's serious. Yeah. And then when I received it and I installed it, the craftsmanship, even the pa- even down to the packaging, like the man mm-hmm. is just meticulous. Uh, it, it was packaged well. It looked great. And so <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm in on a buoy of death mod. Okay. Uh, if you believe, haven't, seen, yeah, yeah. If you haven't seen this, so on Dra- or Jurassic Park on Jaws, the lower reel, mm-hmm. um, I had never noticed this, but there is a giant piece of plastic that goes around the back of that. Sure. And I was like, because when I saw the buoy mod, you replace that plastic, and it looks like waves, and then some buoy mm-hmm. is actually floating. It it rocks back and forth like it's in water. And at the top of the buoy is a DMD, and it will tell you like encounter or uh, multi baller. It, it actually tells you what's going on in the game, which is amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Like this is holy crap. And I, my concern was is like, man, it's going to block some of the view or whatnot. But really, back behind that reel, there's not really much to see. There is the shack for uh, Quint Shack, mm-hmm. but it's not. I was nervous he'd be blocking shots. Right. It doesn't look like it's doing that. Like I said before, it's two ninety five. Honestly, 
I would prefer the silver or topper. But we're we're comparing a three hundred dollar well thing okay to the like a two grand three most most definitely be a minimum of a thousand dollars probably probably and so my point being is is like I I don't really buy mods I feel like some of them are very cheesy I feel like some of them are just cake toppers mm-hmm. <laughs> but well that, I feel that, like that's when what you're Toy Story I know I know they're yeah. not cake topper mods but you have to admit when you first yeah. saw the toy story stuff you that's where your mind went but i feel like stumbler has made such a professional product mm-hmm. that when i put it in my game it was meant to be in my game right like mm-hmm. you i i know i've talked about this and i feel bad if the gentleman's listening but when when i bought my very first pinball machine uh amazing spider-man I bought a pinball machine at the same time for a friend. He's like, if you're going there, pick me up one. So I go to this other guy's house and he had taken AstroTurf and AstroTurf, the whole apron to his good, no good gophers. And then he had taken like a cake topper golf cart and stuck it back in the back. Like he just, when you looked at it, you knew it wasn't meant to be in the game. Right. When I look at stumbler mods, they do. Oh, yeah. my game just quacked. I was like, what was that noise? And now I'm seeing it behind me. So uh, Foo Fighters. Oh, oh it, is it updating? Yeah, it's updating. <laughs> it's updating. Hey, Insider uh, Connected, update your games while you podcast, kids. You know it. So if you hear more, <laughs> I'm pulling a Tom here. Yeah. Thanks, Tom, from Triple Drain. <laughs> but yes, sorry, I've talked so much. But I really, I am a firm believer in these mods. If you haven't checked these out, and, and the list opened like two days ago or three days mm-hmm. ago. I mean, it hasn't been that long and there's our, it's our like three, 400 people deep. It's, it's crazy. Right. It's, it's not, it, yeah, it's not super fast. You're now you're right. I am looking at, so I did pull up the play field pictures cause I wanted to double check exactly where, it, where it goes in the game. So if you look at it, it actually, yeah, there's kind of this, um, it, it looks like a Rocky, burr like a shore i i i I don't live by the ocean i don't know how to like it's it's one of those a wave break things where they dump a whole bunch of water in or uh, sorry rocks in so the waves can okay i okay i've been drinking (laughs) dump a whole bunch of water in the ocean i've been drinking drinking? this yeah it's this sal pellegrino zero blood orange so i don't know maybe the uh maybe the buzz is going to me but uh it's it's like those those wave breaks i think that's what they're called and then it, then it just has some, you know, it, it's, it's a plastic I and mean, what else are you going to say? Right. Yeah. So this, I wonder, I bet that the lights in the mod are probably synced with the lights under the play field for the shark. Yeah. You know, when you start chumming the water, yep. I would bet that that's going to be synced, uh, like, you know, sy- uh, no synchronized, I guess. Yes. Because that was that was surprisingly cool when I played it in person is yeah. having them, you know, because you had the lights that were blue. And then once you dumped the chum in the water, it became they became red lights and it illuminated through the play field. And that was I didn't think that was going to look as cool as it did. So this is definitely bringing you in. And I would argue the same type of thing as uh, like expression lighting kits, right? Yeah. Like expression lighting kits for music pins. In my book, that is, that's a, a necessary upgrade. Yeah. Because it does feel so much different when you have the, the synchronized lights feels more like a concert. Um, I am with you too on mods. Um, I guess that my limit for, this is where I'm trying to find that balance because I, I totally agree that I am a topper guy. I did buy, the most expensive topper I have is the rush topper. Yeah. And I was playing rush the other day and my wife came out from the office and she's like, Hey, that's a cool topper mod. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it is. I, I didn't tell her it was 1800 bucks, but yes, it was a, it, it is a cool topper. And so yeah. there is something about the experience. I, I try to walk that line though, because you're like, okay, so how much am I willing to put in the game? And am I willing to bling it up? that much and and what so i i also feel that if i'm going to do it i want it to feel as if it is next level for the oem right yeah. so you have the the playfield plastics which definitely I mean, they're fine 
they're there to, to give some sort of uh, experience. But if you're going to put a mod in, it needs to take it to a next level. Yeah. Like I don't want to glue a matchbox car underneath the hood and put an led light on it and call it a James Bond car. Yeah, I agree. But uh, there is, there is a limit of, of, okay, what do you like to do? So this actually, so you're in on the stumbler mod. That's what you're saying. Yep. I'm in on the stumbler mod. mod okay. Yes. So, well, and, and the other thing too is, so there's only, if I am going to mod the game, okay. I think there's only two other mods that I, I like feel like either is a necessity or is something like I would, I don't mind spend money on money on. Okay. And that would be a color DMD. Okay. Because the, the perk of a color DMD is too, right. it's not game specific. Right. So you if can you put take it, it in out your, if you want, right? Yeah. So if you have a World Cup soccer mm-hmm. and you, you, you go to sell your World Cup soccer, move it to your Whitewater or whatever. Um, the other mod, I'm not a fan of art blades, but I love mirror blades. Really? Mirror blades. Yes. I love mirror blades I, I, because I'm kind of the opposite. I, I prefer art blades over mirror blades. Really? I, I like the mirror blade cause it gives, it reflects the light and I feel mm-hmm. like it f- makes the game feel more open. I know it's mm. really stupid, but it like in my attack from Mars limited edition. Yes. It, and it has mirror bash, blades and it looks really good on that. Does monster yeah. bash have those? I want to say yes. Hmm. I'll, I'll have to it, go look. I, I, it, it did on my has. LE. Yeah. It, well, okay. Oh. So I have the LE, so it, it probably okay. has those things. I tend to like the, the art blades a little better, Okay. but the mirror blades, definitely it, something on the sides other than the black, I think look good. Right. Yeah. So it, it, I, I do want to get into this a little bit. So we talked to, again, our, our friend over at, uh, at a uh, um, triple drain. So Travis Murray had mentioned that he knows people who they actually get like a pro version, a premium version and an LE version. Oh yes. And they mod up the premium version and then they decide if they want to, which version they want to keep. And so I, I'm curious what people's approach to games are like that's now that seems like overkill to me to yeah. buy three games to mod one up because the minimum amount of mods, if you're going through that, you're probably looking at anywhere from 500 to $1,500 on modding it out. Yeah. And then you're, then you're really getting into, well, should you have just got the, uh, the LE, which is pre modded basically. But I'd be curious to find out what people find the best mods are for games. Like uh, I did buy the the armor package for Deadpool, and so I I still haven't installed it because I I am notorious for buying mods and then not actually putting them on games. Yeah. So I I do have the armor package that I haven't put on the swords, the B Arthur swords, and um, I do have the Tokyo sign mod from Stumbler. I just haven't installed it in the game yet, and I actually still have the flying monkey mod. Um, from Steve Govea. I've had yeah, it. I, I'm not kidding. I've had it for like seven too. years. I've had it yeah. for like seven years. But uh, I did, Steve, I did install the Gus mod, the sarcophagus mod, but which if you're, man, if you're going to get something for Iron Maiden, you need to get that one. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, so I, I try to find like that balance of what I figure is worth it in games because it really is, it doesn't affect the gameplay, but it does, it, it does, take it up to a next level as yeah. long as it doesn't look like astroturf with a glued golf cart and that's the other thing too some of these mods are ridiculous like yeah they look like they look bad and then they're charging 50 75 100 dollars. Right. and i'm yeah. like that's it's, why i'm like when when i'm spending 250 to 300 bucks on a stumbler i'm like it's worth it like well, you can see the craftsmanship. it looks craftsmanship. professional it, yes. and really it looks better than the professional right yeah yeah yeah, there's some no. st- stern, even stern. Some of the stuff they release, you're just like, yeah. I, I'm sorry. The toppers are. I I have a love hate relationship with toppers. Like there are a few of them where I look at and I'm just like, yeah. I, even if I owned the game, I wouldn't buy that. Yeah. Fun fact about B. Arthur because you were talking about Deadpool. Yeah. Did you know in the movie in Deadpool two when mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds is wearing his B. Arthur shirt from okay. Golden Girls? Okay. Uh, he paid for the royalties to wear that shirt. The wow. the movie company wouldn't actually. They're like, no, we're not paying for you to wear that shirt. So <laughs> like, fine, I'll just pay for it myself. Because 
because Deadpool wears those shirts in the comics. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I'm, I'm learning because, you know, Deadpool and Wolverine has been announced. And so all this yeah. stuff's coming out of the woodworks and whatnot. But uh, yeah, he it, it's crazy. But uh, Okay. And by the way, <laughs> okay. If you're going to do a sequel, George Gomez to Deadpool, do a Deadpool Wolverine. Yes. I am not kidding. Sell that package it, get the licensing for it. That will sell. Yeah. That will be such a great game. And if you're looking at a Marvel type hookup, you need that, that hookup because Deadpool is a great, it's a, it's a brutal game, but it's fun. It's, it's still, that's one of the few games I've moved out of my basement to take a break from that. I regret moving out of my basement. (laughs) It's a, it's a good game. Yeah. It's, it's a really good game. And it's funny because when I first played it, I was like, this game's so simple, it's annoying. And then I started playing more of it. It's I'm so like, this good. is actually quite quite a It's so game. good. Yeah. If, if it, anyone wants to trade me my Iron Maiden for a Deadpool Pro, let's let's have a conversation. Yeah. No, you need to get the premium, man. You need the drop targets. Because really it's more fun. Okay, I, I'm a sucker for drop talker targets though. Targets. Like I yeah. will pay targets, targets. Uh, I will pay the money for the drop targets. Because it it's just I think it's just fun. It's that that's one thing I love in pinball is seeing how the game changes and when you hit a target it just thunk, just goes down. Yeah. I love seeing that. So and that's what I'll get. Just pay the money and get the premium, and then you get the disco ball. True. So you bring up a point of Stern needs to get a hold of Deadpool and Wolverine to yeah. to do that machine. Yep. But uh, I'm tying this in with I saw on. On Facebook from Colin, who's okay. over Kineticist and This Week in Pinball, and he mm-hmm. poised a question because everyone's been hearing the rumor, John Wick's next from Stern. Sure. More than likely, it's John Borg as designer, Tim Sexton on code. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Probably maybe Raymond with that, you think? You think yeah. Raymond's going to be in that? I think he might assist. Um, mm-hmm. I, who knows? Uh, with Randy Martinez on artwork is what I'm hearing as well. Okay. Uh, and and Rand, Randy did like Man, Mandalorian, Star Wars. Yeah. He did the line drawn stuff. Yeah. So the question was poised: Is John Wick too violent for Stern Pinball's brand that they are aiming for nowadays? Granted, we were talking about this before, and they've made Walking Dead, they've, they've made, made Game of Thrones, they've made, they've made Metallica, made Supra- they've made Game Sopranos. of Thrones, they've made ACDC. Yeah, they've made Iron Maiden. Heck, they've, even heavy metal. Yeah. But that, I don't know if that was. Nah, I, I don't really count heavy metal. I, I honestly, if Iron Maiden's back, kind of brutal too. Like there's a oh, part yeah. where like, when you no, get an extra is, ball. Yeah. And Eddie yeah. rips the ball out of his chest like it's his heart. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty gnarly. It, it, it's now, I will say if you're going to look at it, it's still probably like PG, PG 13. Yeah, true. You no, know, it's, it's not, it, now Iron Maiden has intentionally done that to make sure that their art style has been, you know, has been safe enough, right? It's been kind of like risky enough, yeah. but not like too bad. Like and, and I think of a story back in the day where they had, so when you used to buy a record, okay. Yeah. So there was one time they did like a, a sample piece with Eddie as in, I Okay, what is it called? Is it the Vitruvian Man? You know, you know the guy who's you know the the Da Vinci thing. Oh yeah, though he's got the two yeah. hands up here. Yeah, where his arms hands. are out yeah. and up like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, they made that for the decal in the middle of the of the record, and you know where the post goes. Yeah. Yep. Right. Okay. And and Steve Harris from Iron Man is like, yeah, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny. It, it would be it would funny. Be funny. But I can totally see someone's parent walking by and saying what you're listening to I'm, okay this is also the the band that have the uh, the 666 number of the beast yeah so th- so they were probably walking that fine line anyway but apparently devil worship is is less offensive to moms than um uh than a uh, a metal post in the groin i guess <laughs> since and those jokes have been around for years oh yeah yeah <laughs> But my point being, so do you think John Wick's too too violent for for Stern and what they're aiming for? Okay, I am on record saying that I have not watched Game of Thrones, nor will I watch Game of Thrones because it is too much for me. 
I, this, same this, here. Yeah, this is a personal preference again. Um, I've never watched it. My cousin described it to me. He's like, to sum it up in in, in two words, uh, blood, blood and bare chests. Yeah. I was like, oh. No, and yeah, and there, there's a lot of that stuff, which is not, words. and it's not for me. Now, this is not me, by the way, saying that you can't enjoy that. That's that's the beauty of living in a free country, yeah, folks, is that totally. they, that's they your are not jam, catering awesome. to all audiences. And this is the same thing as uh, doing the Supreme Pinball Machine. Like, the Supreme Pinball Machine is not aimed at me. One, I, I truly didn't know anything about Supreme before the Pinball Machine came out nor do I really know anything about it since it seems like the, the app that I, the, there was an app that came out on iPhone and it was the I'm rich app that had like, you paid $10,000 for it. And it just had a picture that said, I'm rich, which yeah. by the way, whoever sold that brilliant. Cause they, I, they sold like 10 of them, but Hey, that's a hundred thousand dollars. But, uh, it seems a little bit more like a flex, right? Yeah. Like that's not, that's not for me. It's, I'm sure that it's a fun game, but I'd pay $5,000 for it. You know, it's, it's, it's like the home version, right? Yeah. So is John wick too violent? They could actually release a version that is super violent or they can release a version that's a little more PG. Yeah. I, they, they, they walk that line with Deadpool, right? Yeah. I mean, Deadpool, it's an R rated movie. There's a lot of violence and, and a lot of language in that. Yes. And and so they released the the Deadpool comic, which is still, he's still sarcastic. He still has all his lines, but they made it enough for a home environment. However, do they need to make everything that's for a home, home environment? I would say no. I mean, Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction is selling. That is not- Like hotcakes. Pe- yeah, that is not a, a traditional- family friendly movie. You're not taking your kids for move for a Saturday matinee to watch Pulp Fiction. It has earned the R rating. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it didn't earn it. It like blew past it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so can you release John wick? Yes. I, I would say absolutely. And there are enough people who will buy that. And Stern doesn't have to release something for, you know, everybody, every time in some ways it's a little bit like, um, like spooky, right? Yeah. You like the play, you you like the layout, but you don't like the theme. Get Looney Tunes. Uh, And you're talking about text. You're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, obviously not for the faint of heart. Yes. Right. Uh, but if you want, if you like the game, you can get the Looney Tunes version. Now they're only releasing a game every year or two right spooky it's not it's not a fast release stern's releasing one every four months so they don't have to have something that is for you know pg for everybody and they release the sopranos yeah there's like a mode that has like it's an f word mode yeah (laughs) i forgot about that yeah yeah and you got dancing strippers on the yeah exactly on the play yeah and the playful too yeah i i'm i'm kind of like if the money makes sense uh, and Stern, you know, it's more uh, inclusivity, right? Like this hobby but, isn't but made for one specific person. You don't have to throw a party person. for everybody. Yeah, not like, not every party has to be a kid friendly party. It's true. It is true. And so, I think honestly, if this is the same company that made Playboy, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I I don't think it's a big deal to do John Wick. I just. It's one of those things, like like you said. I enjoy Pulp Fiction. I think Pulp Fiction's a great game. It's not I, coming I, into I, my collection. I watched collection. it one time, and I'm like, I am probably not going to watch it again. But okay, here's <laughs> here's just a question though. Um, I just Googled it. What do you think the worldwide box office of the John Wick movie franchise is? Just throw it a guess. Uh, combined from one to four. Seems like it. Okay, uh, the four uh, movies. Yeah, four movies. I'm going to guess over a billion combined because yeah, that's about 250,000 P or 250,000. It's, it's over a billion piece. combined. Okay. You don't think the Stern would be interested in that kind of, in that kind of audience. Yeah. And I, it, it has a huge fan fan connection. Like there's well, a I, fan base that goes after this and it's again, it's the demographic that's buying pinball machines. 
Well, and literally like everyone's clamoring for a matrix. Well, there's okay. Not everyone. There's a good chunk of pinball people. I hear they're like, I want matrix. I want matrix. Okay, right. I'd take matrix. If it's the first movie only, don't, yeah, put, same here. don't put two, three or four or whatever five they're going to make just the standalone one matrix one. That's the only one that's worth anything. But my point being, if you made it just off a of one, it was a soft R. Yeah. But the only reason it got an R was because of the violence. Because well, even the swearing, it doesn't even say the F word. Wasn't once. it like a kick to the head or something? Something. Honestly, yeah, so I, I, I don't have, know if the, I yeah. don't know if this rumor is true. Like if if you're a listener and you like, can verify the story, my understanding is is Matrix released really close to the Columbine shooting, and they didn't want kids to go see this oh. and oh. and to then think it was cool to to do more shooting and something to do with like also like parents and with the combine shooting, there was a sensitive subject. So they gave it an R so that teenagers weren't going and seeing this. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but that's really like, honestly, outside of there's really no swearing. There's no sexual content in the first one. Like they're shooting a lot of people. There's yeah, there's there's a lot of laser beam shots. This is guns. So I, I totally but even get. then, like the shooting, I don't feel like something you wouldn't see in like a PG-13 movie. There's not a ton of blood. Like there is blood. Like there's, yeah. you see bullets going through legs and stuff like that. But I still mm-hmm. like, it's not like <laughs> Pulp Fiction. Okay. Pulp Fiction is <laughs> not PG. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? Like a gun goes off and, and the whole back windshield's covered. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Where Matrix is not like that. So right. I just, that's why I'm saying like. It'd be really weird to me. And granted, I haven't seen the John Wick movies. Maybe they're very, very violent. They are maybe, very violent. They, like, the amount of people level. that he kills is like a ridiculous amount of people. What did they say? 500 people combined over four movies? Something like that. <laughs> All because they killed his dog? John Wick deaths. Death count. Death there count. we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, John Wick death count is... Oh, geez. Just give me the number. <laughs> just just give me the number. Why John Wick you? kill count is 439. <laughs> Yikes. That is that's a, that's lot. a lot of people. That's a lot. That's a lot. That, that's all. What, what did we learn? We learned you don't kill this man's dog. I know. Seriously. After yeah. he loses his, is it like he loses his whole family and the only thing he has left is his dog? Mm. Something like that. Anyhow. All right. Speaking of violent, speaking of brutal <laughs> Brom Stoker, <laughs> Black Knight, Sword of Rage. Okay, is going back on the line. Just the pro, not the premium. Okay, does this shock you? Does like the rumors are like they're trying to like take the 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 wind out of Steve Ritchie's sails? And- no, I don't think so. It, no, it, it's it's about money. Like Stern doesn't care. Like st- like legit Stern doesn't care about the 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 programmer. You could argue that they were releasing the monsters to yeah. you know you could argue that okay fine but for, to take the sale what was like monster bash uh um remake was coming out at the same time was, was that what the rumor was no but, they're because steve richie's not at jersey no, no, jack no, I, i'm just, just saying like oh. people like ha- have that thing now is it possible that there are ways that they can like poke at people sure yeah I and mean, you had foo fighters come out with like an alien thing. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what does that have? To, you know, I, I know that Foo Fighters is kind of alien, but it definitely was, hey, uh, we can, whatever you can do, we can do better. I totally get that. Yeah. But that's not the driving force. Like the driving force of this is the pros were uh, the topper. They re released the topper. Yeah. By the way, when I bought the topper, I bought it for like 450 bucks. And what's it selling for now? A lot more. Was it two grand? Yeah, I think so. What that that's a four hundred percent increase? Yeah, is yeah. that where we're about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is it more than is, that? Is, is it two grand or is it fifteen hundred? Still, for a topper that was four fifty when it was originally released. Yeah. But here's another insane thing too. This game seriously is probably just getting released, like re-released for the topper, right? Like, there's no. Yeah, I think is so. there demand for bl- demand for Black Knight Star Rage? My understanding, it was the worst. Uh, well, 
Okay, but numbers this wise, it was one of the worst performing Sterns out there. It was, and this is the problem, right? And we've seen this with Stranger Things. We've seen this with yes. uh, Monsters. We've yeah. seen it with even Ghostbusters to an extent. Yeah, where it comes out, it goes through a rough patch, it doesn't keep up with sales, and so they cut it short. And then people say, "Hey, I, I still want so." This is the supply and demand thing, right? Um, yep. I think the, the the topper is still one of my all time favorite toppers. Yeah, it is really cool. And uh, okay, I I have a love hate relationship with Black Knight. I and I kind of love to hate it in some ways because I wanted to love it so much. Yeah, because the the but the upper play field. Okay, if if it's a if it's a build of materials issue, how much is one of those stupid physical ball locks? I don't know. Okay, do you think it's got to be could... a coil and a post? So you're twenty bucks it, plus the the form. I don't know. You, do you really think it's that cheap? That physical ball lock up top. I mean, I, if... I'm betting it's like 150 bucks. Okay, yeah. Okay, something like that. You don't think that you could, okay, again, this is me pure speculation, okay? But you don't think that they could pull that out, put a flipper, a pop bumper, some targets up there, and make it worthwhile up there. Because yeah. that is the most vacant play field. I mean, it is so vacant, they made it transparent. Well, not only that, but like, pe like tournament people hate it because yeah. you can sit up there all day long if it's yeah. not brutalized. Yeah. It's just, it's a pointless upper play field, especially when you look at Black Knight, you know, 2000, you look at Black Knight, it just. Yeah, there's, there's a purpose for the upper play field, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I just wish that it would, okay, to be blunt, I think the pro is a better game. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's probably why they're only running the pro. Yeah. But there are people who, there are people who disagree and that's totally fine. You know? Yeah. They, uh, but this is my preference. I would rather have the pro version of it. My friend actually sold his LE to get a pro. Yeah. It's one of those games that like, if you really do like it, there's no reason to hold on to the, the music's awesome. Premium LE. Oh yeah. yeah the music's it, awesome. It really is a great game. It's it a, really is. The vibe is so good. It's a dark horse. It really is like it. I'd pick this game over uh, some of other Stern's catalog. It's just, yeah. And it you know what, man, if this, I wish this one had the expression lighting kit, I Same. talk about that would be great. Yep. With the, with the music. Well, and I think it's a testament to how good the topper is when, I mean, really look at the Ninja Turtles does oh, a similar thing. It's, it's a technodrome, but the so eye, so bad, but the eye moves just like the head does on, on black Knight. Foo Fighters just came out. It's the Megatron, not Megatron. It, it's it won't, the the Footron. Yeah. Its head moves and talks to you. It, yeah. We're re we're reproducing this. Yeah, in in different games, and so the concept's the same. It might not be as well executed as Black Knight. Yeah, but we're we're going back to the same well essentially. Right. And, I, 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 I like I said, it speaks to how good Black Knight's topper is. That's the only game that I know of where people are like. Yeah, it's a good game. If you slap the topper on it, it's it's worthy of going into the collection. Okay, I just <laughs> pulled up the picture. Okay, that that mechanism up there, I'm guessing was at least two hundred bucks. Yeah, I it is it that that looks a little more engineered, but I I don't think you need the physical ball lock up there. No, you don't. You really don't. And having the black knight. Now I know that that Steve spent all his money his build of material on that ridiculous high cost black knight dude. But you have to admit it's really cool. It really is. And honestly, let's let's be honest. This game is just kind of a a love letter to Steve Ritchie and his career, right? Like sure. he is the Black Knight. So it's it's yeah. It's a cool way to honor him in a modern age. And it's a total gut punch. I mean it is not an easy game. It's a no. total gut punch. But I just, I, I just wish that that upper play field had more. Oh, okay. I mean, 
more something, some stand ups and whatnot. Yeah, just the upper it just felt like the upper playfield had nothing. Yeah. So speaking I don't know. I, I, I it will sell more toppers, but I don't think there's a lot of demand for it. I, I really don't. Okay. Speaking of gut punches. Okay. There there are fans of the Blue Brothers Blues Brothers oh. crying around the world. <laughs> Did you yeah. hear about this? Home Pin has acquired oh, their their next game they're releasing should be shown this weekend at Pin uh, was it Pinfest Newcastle? Yeah. Oh, so we'll we'll have footage of this next week. The, but uh, okay, so Josh, okay, I I usually take the first take on this. What is your take? And, uh, now, okay, I don't think either of us really have much of a connection with Blues Brothers. I've never seen the show. Have you ever seen the show? I, I've never seen the show, okay. but I heard it's a classic. It, it's, it's definitely a classic. Reference. Tend to tends to be of the demographic of people who are probably in their fifties and sixties. I feel like right? I don't need to see the Blues Brothers, and I'm going to tell you why. Why? Uh, I watched Eddie Murphy's. Is it Delirious? The one where he's wearing the red, the red suit. Uh, yes, Delirious. He has the red suit. Raw. He had the blue suit. Okay. And so I Delirious watched- was actually kind of funny. Like, okay, everybody. It. Mm, okay, I, I'm not going to get into the whole like PC stuff. Okay, that stuff okay. is totally not PC. And I will, I will argue that it was a different time. It was early eighties. Yeah. It was an early eighties. Let's just say there's a lot of stuff that would not fly today in comedy. Yeah. Um, but it, he's a funny guy, but yeah, it's uh, it was a different era. Absolutely. So what are you but getting at with that? A lot of the comedians I enjoy. So Gabriel Iglesias like reference that seeing delirious is what made him want mm-hmm. to be a comedian. A lot of people reference Eddie Murphy's delirious, right? It's, yeah. It's so a, I'm like, well, it has some really funny skits like the ice cream man. If you haven't heard the ice cream man, that one's great. That yes. one's awesome. Yeah. So, but my point being is, is I watched delirious and by the end of it, I was like, I don't get it. Yeah. Like, why is this such a classic? Then I realized the reason I don't get it is because all these jokes have literally been stolen from this and placed in other right. movies I've seen growing up. Yep. So by the time I actually finally saw Eddie Murphy's delirious, Mm-hmm. I'd already heard all the material because it had been quoted and everything else. Right. So where I'm getting at with this is I could probably watch Blue B- Blues Brothers. I'd probably love it. But there is a lot of cultural references to Blues Brothers. There's been a lot of you know, bits done in other movies and other TV series. I feel like if I watch Blues Brothers, I'd be like, I've seen this before. I haven't, but I have it's deja vu. So um, personally, me. I, I do. I am a fan of the old school Saturday Night Live. I feel like they have lost their way a little bit. They, mm-hmm. they they come out with a gem every once in a while, but the old old school Dan Aykroyd, Steve Martin, you know, up okay, to you're talking old school, like pre, like the first five years. Yeah, and even up to Adam Sandler, David Spade, Chris Farley okay, stuff. So that's the '90s stuff. So yes, kind of the '80s was kind of a no man's land. The '90s, yeah. the early '90s, was a little bit of a it was an embarrassment of riches, really. Yeah. I mean, they had Chris Farley, they had David Spade, they had Mike Myers, they had Dana Carvey. And okay, ironically, Dana Carvey of that mix, he was the star of the show. David Dana Spade Carvey. once. Oh, and yeah. Dana he was. Carvey didn't do anything after. Now I know I know he had a lot of health problems, but yeah. uh the fact that he was the star of of the show of that era, and you had like Adam Sandler, who went on to make like four point five billion dollars in movies. Yeah. Yeah. So David Spade once said, because they're like, would you ever be on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire as a host or whatever? He's like, I was already on that show once. And they showed a picture and it was that cat. It was like the 91 or 92 cast mm-hmm. of Saturday Night Live. And, and literally the whole cast had made millions, like individually, yeah. they'd all made millions by themselves. Yeah. So, anywho, the point being, hey, is, okay, do you know, okay, speaking of Eddie Murphy though, do you know why Eddie Murphy was so ticked at Saturday Night Live for years? Mm-mm. It was the David Spade joke. Which one was that? So you know how he would do like the Hollywood minute, and he, okay, David Spade is a sarcastic guy, right? He, yes, yep, he is a sarcastic guy. So he would go through, and you know Eddie Murphy had a lot of hits, yeah, and then he did, oh, it was like the Vampire or Harlem Nights, and then he did like a vampire oh, yeah. like. Okay, then he just like lost it and just did a whole bunch of stinkers. 
I think when, when the, Shrek revived his career, when the bla- <laughs> yeah, yeah, when the when the vampire thing came out, yeah, he because he would just have his his little minute, and he's like he he pushed he put up the the ad, you know the the movie poster, and he said, yeah. "Oh look, a star's falling," and they just kept moving on. <laughs> and That's Eddie Murphy terrible. was so ticked at that that he like would like he was so mad. It, it was accurate, but that's, oh, yeah. it was accurate. It was that's accurate. Funny. Yeah. He just put a whole bunch of stinkers out there. Kit, okay, where were we going with this? Blues I guess brothers. obviously Blues brothers. We're, Blues we're, brothers. We're, we care more about Saturday night live than Blues trivia. brothers. Yeah, absolutely. No, Blues brothers. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Honestly, uh-huh. if you haven't listened to Dr. John did a fantastic job. If you haven't looked, go to the pinball network, do it right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe after this episode of interviewing it's the Aussie podcast oh. of what what is his name Mike the, the owner of Home Pin and it's just such an oh, insane oh ranting you know of it's, a man uh, that just giving the middle finger to America and yeah. it's hey if that's what your business wants to be cool whatever yeah he I had, have he didn't win bonus yeah. points from that episode and basically <laughs> just saying he he's not going to do business in America because he had like six like, bad experiences with customers i thought it was like three returned hey, paypal yeah, was, things anyway, from america it, three it or basically four. just like, painted everybody in america is like unreliable and like wow that's what, what do we have interesting almost guy. 400 million people here in america yeah, and we've based the whole demographic guy. off yeah. of four yeah anywho but my point being is, is i've played thunder turds i i've played spinal Oof. crap Oof. uh yeah they just they're not for I, pinball players no, they're not. It, it, it's it, a weird concept. You're making pinball for non-pinball people. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. But hey, you obviously are still making money, or you have learned how to swindle people out of money, yeah. and maybe that's why you've moved from Australia to China to Taiwan. To Taiwan, yeah. He, he yeah. actually moved out of Taiwan. Out of China. I'm, I'm surprised. Oh, yeah. oh, has he moved out of Taiwan no, now? No, he moved out of China to Taiwan. I, oh. I really haven't kept up with them. The, I wonder how the earthquakes affecting him. Obviously, not too yeah. much if they're releasing Blues Brothers. I I would argue that the Blues Brothers. Okay, we're not talking like okay. There's like A list titles, B list titles, C list titles. This is in that cult title. Like yeah. it's a cult. You know, it's it's kind of along the lines of if someone decided to release Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, like you're gonna have some passionate fans. So yeah, but I think I think if you released Rocky Horror Picture Show and did it like the way you did uh, Elvira's House of Horrors, yeah, it'd sell gangbusters. I think it's the way you present it. It may have, it may, it may. But the uh, Paige yeah, and that, Franchi, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Chris like, Franchi yeah, is saying Rocky look, Horror Picture Show. Look, I already do got Doctor Frankenfurter. What was his name? That like the Tim Curry. Yeah. 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 I, I already got that set up for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, it's one of those, it's a cult classic. It's more of like people who are in their fifties and sixties, really just who, so who's going to buy it? People who are like grandpas, uh, who are just looking for, Hey, I just want something in my house and maybe they don't care. Maybe they don't care about competitive pinball or having it, having it work super well. Yeah. Um, maybe I, okay. But your level of excitement on this from a scale of one to 10 with it being home pin, maybe a two. Okay. Let's just, let's just say on the theme pinball. alone on, on the theme, I think it's cool when they do, you know, obviously I wasn't a huge fan of Godzilla as a thing, but I think Keith knocked it out of the park so yeah. well that I'm like, it makes me a believer Godzilla. Okay. But Godzilla as a theme is a two. It yeah. is. It, it yeah. is a cult thing. It's it's campy. It's obviously it's hard Keith, for me to judge well on a theme that I've never seen the movie too. So it's like yeah. But Keith Keith spun straw into gold, and maybe you would you would put Godzilla as a three, just because there are people who are really fun, like it, fans of the campiness, right? Yeah. The Blues Brothers they haven't been relevant for twenty five years. Yeah. And, and I don't see that they're they're, they're not going to get revitalized from this. So you're probably selling to an older demographic who's just looking for something in the game room. But as a theme itself, it's not for me. I'm, I I would show zero interest in buying this. My prediction is if 
Thunder Turds and Spinal Crap gives me any idea of where the gameplay is going to go. With, oh, it's going to be terrible. With, with Blues Brothers, we can officially call it Snooze Brothers right yeah, it's, now. It's, I just, it's going to be terrible, but okay, this is what I've always said. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Prove me wrong. I, if I'm wrong, great. Th- these are our I'd predictions. I'd happily eat crow. Seriously, yeah. I'd happily eat These crow are our predictions, crazy. and if if you put out a good game, then we we have no problem with saying we got that one wrong. Yeah, definitely. I think and let's, this is the one thing I do appreciate that people, when they listen to us, they say, we enjoy what you're saying because we feel like you're fair and balanced. Yeah. Like no one's necessarily like safe They're Like we're not going to thrash on someone, right? Like this is probably the, the, the meanest we're going to get on home. Okay. We'll, we'll still criticize though. When we feel that there's constructive that... criticism, right? Like it's yeah. us saying, Hey, this is where we think you fell short. This is where we think you can improve. And, yeah. and we enjoy your guys' products. Hey, I, hey just, I wonder if there's a whole bunch of drop targets in the back that spell Blues Brothers. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's How many would that be? Disco ball. Like 13 or something? No, there's just going to be a center ramp that you have to spell Blues Brothers. Oh, that'd be awesome. You know what? You might win people over by doing a long enough sweepable drop t- target oh. bank that's <laughs> spelled out Blues Brothers. Yeah. yeah man. <laughs> that would be kind of cool, actually. <laughs> And then that if they be. spat out like 13 balls, like Apollo 13. Yes. <laughs> Love it. <Yeah>. Genius. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if it'll be like just the blues brothers or if it'll be, cause they did like a, a sequel with John Goodman. Cause you, yeah. you know, the, um, what's his name? I bet, I bet it's the old one. Like and the John, other thing too is Jim Belushi, honestly, the John only- Belushi died. Yeah. The only redeeming quality of this is it's like forty eight hundred for this game. Yeah, but okay. even then, you at least nailed the price point. Yeah, you nailed the price point. So if you're yeah. finding something that's like the equivalent of a home pin, like a home version, sorry, like a stern home version, then yeah. this may this may actually be similar to that. I think the stern home versions are actually quite good. But yeah, I agree. you know, it's it's in that it's in that ballpark. At least they're not trying to sell it for nine thousand dollars. True, true. Uh, so yeah. All right. And our last note on 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 the notes we have for tonight. Okay. We want to say congratulations to Mia Harboski. She is the new person down at CGC. She's the mm-hmm. person that took Ryan White's spot. Um, slam tilt. You beat us to it. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. <laughs> they Gosh. they released an episode two Ron days ago. Like, By the way, mm. Ryan White's out. <laughs> he's been out since December and yeah. I I've heard amazing things about Mia already. I've heard distributors yeah. are loving her. She's doing a great job. Mia, if you listen, I don't know if you do or not. Of like, course she does. She like, welcome to the show the all the time. Yeah. yeah. If not, Butch will, Butch will be like, Hey, by the way, the loser kids say congratulations yeah. and good job. <laughs> Seriously. I'm hearing great things. Yeah. So, um, and, and that's good. I, I, okay. We've always said we love what CGC does. We yes. don't like the speed at which they do it. But yes. we do love what they do. And I have four of your games downstairs. So it, it obviously something's working right in, in what you're doing. Can, can I give you some inside baseball? I don't know dun, if I'm going to get in dun. trouble for this or not. Ooh, go ahead. Uh, I actually was in talks with CGC about working with them. Uh, but because I was unwilling to relocate to Chicago, uh, uh, I, I was... And it wasn't for Ryan's white position. I was actually asking to help out. I feel like their communication is terrible. And I feel like their social media presence is non-existent. Well, okay. A lot of these companies, their social media presence yes. probably can do some upgrading. Yeah. But they kind of wanted a, an all in one package. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Hey, so, maybe she can do that. Great. Right? Maybe I really, honestly, I think, I, th- I think the bar is kind of low for CGC when it comes to that stuff. I, if, if me is already knocking it out of the park, like people are saying she is, then I, I don't see a problem moving forward. I think she'll do great. And if she's over social media, awesome. If not, I'll give you some pointers, reach out. So, okay. I'm not and, saying we're perfect with loser kid, but there's some easy <laughs> stuff that you could be doing with your social media accounts. Like they have like three posts on Instagram. Yeah. I don't know if there's a Pulp Fiction post D- on there D- yet. Josh knows a lot more about social media than I do. I, I I've kind of <laughs> checked out a little bit on social media. Okay, I, I do have a question for our listeners though. I am I I will plan on upgrading my 
Simpsons, and I could either do the uh, the color DMD, the LCD, or the LED version. Okay, I I actually okay. have tried both options. Now, the LCD it actually works great for like Pirates of the Caribbean, like the stern one. Yeah, and it 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 worked really well for that. For Spider Man, it didn't work out so well. Like I and and um, uh, Iron Man. Like the LED actually worked out a lot better for that, with the uh, with the the movie picture pixelation capture thing. It actually worked better with the LED. So I wonder if someone has a strong feeling about Simpsons with the LED or LCD. Um, you can go on the website and kind of do a, a side. Yeah, by side I know, comparison. I know. I, I've I've done that and I've seen it, and that's that's why I've gone. I think through. a lot of people. A lot of people prefer the LCD over the LED. I think they do because, but you know what? I think a lot of people like the ability to blend the dots. Yeah. And I think they look worse when you blend the dots. Yeah. I do too. I, Cause it's I almost like too the, rigid still. They're not, they're it, not as fluid. Yeah. It looks, let's just say this, especially the Simpsons one, it looks weird. Yeah. So that's I, why I'm gonna just keep the dots. I still like the dots. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, that's uh, that. That's my my reach out. Any, anything else, Josh? Any, anything so, else you? So we do have some person. We do have some person. We have a person that did reach out and left okay. us four questions they wanted to hear. So, okay, all right. Uh, let's go ahead. Julie, thanks for sending these in. First question is: What is a dream theme you would like to see made into a pinball machine? Who do you want the company? What company and design would you choose to make it? Um. I okay. I'm not hiding that I love Keith Alwyn machines. Because the, I mean, the the bottom line is Keith is Keith has that secret sauce. So I I will take Keith um, on any game. I, okay, that's not to say other I, I can't like other other designers too. But if I'm choosing one, I'm yeah. choosing Keith. Uh, I will choose Stern just because of uh, their they have a price point and reliability that yeah. works out for most and. Stern has that uh, that big bang for your buck. Okay. Yep. Dream theme. Ooh. Okay, man. I actually am trying to figure out like what are the things that I would definitely want. I know I, that I've narrowed it down to two. Okay. So two. so what theme, right. what what theme would you like? So I'm I'm in the same boat with you. I want L1. I okay. want Stern to make it. Okay. I want either a the Aquabats. Aquabats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, go watch. So Tubi. It's okay. A, it's All a right. free. I, it's, I it's just find it funny. This was like like this is back from like our fourth episode or something like that. We were talking yeah. about dream themes. It's still your dream theme five years later. So and you want dang you Jack Danger for teasing it on Facebook the other day mm-hmm. about. Do you want to see an Aqu- Aquabats pinball machine? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. I think it'd be easy. It's it, anywho. Okay. Uh, it, it it sets itself up. If you haven't watched the Aquabats Super Show or listened to their music, I highly recommend it. It is goofy. It is silly. Okay. It's not for everyone. Okay. Second one, and I think it would do gangbusters. Is Scott Pilgrim versus the World? Okay. The theme is still going strong after twenty years. They just released a new Netflix series called Sp- Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, uh, which was an awesome rehash of the uh, of the story the i mean the cast if you could get the cast chris evans brie larson who did captain america michael sarah todd uh, brie larson oh, oh oh she was in that okay. she was in that okay uh the guy you that mean captain plays marvel she did captain marvel not captain, Car- america. captain marvel sorry she did captain marvel um well and chris evans was captain america right and then todd i can't remember his last name or not it's not todd Who's the guy that plays Shazam? And he also was the voice of Flynn. Uh, Zachary Livy. Yes, he was in it. He was one of the ex- evil exes. It it's, has so many people, and they all love that movie so much. That I was listening to an interview from Chris Evans the other day, and he says, they're still in the same chat. This, granted, this movie came out like 15 years ago. Sure. They're still on the same chat, like email chain or whatever, hmm. and it's very active. They all love that okay. movie. And we would be, they, they actually voiced the characters for the new the new cartoon series on Netflix. So I just, it, it would be very easy to do kind of Deadpool esque where you're fighting okay. the evil exes. It's easy. Like there's seven of them. You have to fight them to then 
be with Ramona. I just think it's 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 a great theme for pinball, and it would just just if you've ever seen the movie, like when he's fighting, there's a part where he's like doing multiple combos, like where he's just like, and it's like 56, 57, 58. It'd be so cool, like to have a fight mode where you like have to follow the arrows right, but the final shot is on a spinner and when you hit the spinner it does the combo count up the 56 57 as he's beating the crap out of matthew patel or whoever it is it, it's i think it'd do great i think okay. it's i think it's old enough that you're going to hit an older generation but still relative enough that you're going to like the younger generation is going to be appealed to plus it's got the whole video game thing going for it like classic okay. video game thing okay so yeah that's my spill okay so um and we've talked about themes that I think would be great. Uh, okay. I, I, I really do think Deadpool and Wolverine would be a hit. I would yes. love to see that. That's um, your dream theme or no, that you're just saying that, that, you know, okay. Dream theme. We've talked about this. I would love to have a super Mario brothers game. Yes. 100%. Like that, that is a, an absolute no, brainer. I would take super Mario brothers over Zelda and Zelda would be a close second. Cause I, I, I haven't Ooh. played too. Okay. Full disclosure, I've only played two of the Zelda games. Which I, and, and the NES ones, like the old, the original, <laughs> original gold cartridge. The side one. scrolling everyone yes. hated because yes. yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So I have what have that one. And well, the side scrolling is the two, number two. Number two, yeah. Adventure yeah. of Link. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I've done the first two. So that that was uh, you know, those are kind of fun. Um, but I would definitely take Super Mario Brothers. Okay. I I'm just gonna throw out a few others that I think would be great. I'd love to see the killers. The killers, the killers would, be a, would be great. A great pinball machine. Not their later crap. Their earlier crap. Okay. Yeah. That's that's almost any band, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Up to day and age. You you can do all that stuff up to day and age. Uh definitely do the killers. Um and or I, I would pick Muse for you because I know you love Muse, Muse. Oh, Muse would be great. Muse Muse would be fantastic. And I think actually, you could do a whole pin just off of Knights of Sidonia. Like literally that yeah. song you could, you know, that's I, got, okay. The, but I will say simulation theory on muse because it yes. has that whole eighties retro video game concept. And in the concert, he goes up to a video game and gets sucked into it. Kind of like Tron. Yeah. Like it would be, I think muse would be, muse would be great. Course. I, th those are music pins. And we know that I, 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 well, the I've next, said the next question is, is what mom or dad band would you like to see made into a pin? So, so I'm going to, okay. I should have told you that too, because pink would have been great, by the way, pink. Yeah. I still say pink would be a great, uh, band or, a, a, sorry, performer to do it. You yeah. I, Taylor Swift, seriously, if you put out a Taylor Swift one, my, I could buy one and put it in my grandma in my mother-in-law's house. Well, you could put one in every, right. uh, yeah. Taylor Swift should have a pinball machine. Oh, what is the store where you go in to get your girl's ears pierced? You shouldn't because like they hot topic ears. or something or a hot topic, but they're like in every Walmart or whatever. It's one of those little girls stores that anyhow, I'm like, you could buy a Taylor Swift pinball machine and put them all of those. Yeah. Anyhow. No, all right. Yeah, de definitely. Th those are just uh, off the top of my head. I mean, you can always throw in like Van Halen, uh, you know, okay. There's a whole bunch of, of eighties rock that you could do. Van Halen would be great. Motley Crue, probably not safe for work, but, uh, it would sell. Um, all right. So moving on to the next question, cause okay. you're saying a bunch of bands. So which, which mom or dad rock bands would you like to love to see themed into a pinball machine? You know, I, okay. I would say that, um, journey would be great. Journey Don't would be great. And the sky um, keeps on turning. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it, 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 cause it does have some slow, slow songs. It has some, some jammers. Uh, Def Leppard would be great too. Um, Bon Jovi sold a billion albums. Yeah. Um, so really, I, I, you're looking at kind of that glam rock era yeah. of that, of, um, the eighties. So those would be the huge ones that would still be quite safe. I mean, everybody would love a Van Halen really, but then it'd be yeah. like, is it Van Halen or Van Hagar? And I grew up more in the Van Hagar area era. And so I tend to like those songs a little more, but I appreciate the other songs. Um, yeah. But you could even do just a, a pinball machine off Def Leppard hysteria. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, the Aquabats. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I uh, will check out the Aquabats. I, I I know I bust your chops on it, but it, I will check out the Aquabats. 
I will send you a couple songs that aren't so crazy. I'll okay. send you the ones that are definitely. Um, so, so the band I would love to see, uh, some 41, I think. Okay. That's more of music, a 90. Okay. I, that probably is dad rock now. It's, it is dad rock. But the cool part about them, I don't know if you know much about some 41. Don't know anything, but they do appeal to an older generation too, because they grew up on iron maiden, Judas yeah. priest, Metallica. So they did incorporate a lot of those elements into their music, especially in the earlier years. So there is kind of a classic rock vibe to their punk pop stuff. Um, they just released what they're claiming to be their final album. They're hanging it up after this tour. It's called Heaven and Hell. If you have not checked it out, it is amazing. Heaven is the pop punk side. And then as they grew, you know, as as they made it later into their career. So the first 15 years is like pop punk. And the last 15 years has been metal. And so, and when I say metal, it's more like, you know, like, 80s like speed metallica metal sure. kind of stuff you know uh not master not like of puppets Norwegian. yeah 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 it. master puppet stuff like that um with a little more heft to it okay. more modern edge uh but if you haven't checked out that album it's a double album amazing from okay. start to finish uh but yeah i think some 41 you've got so much content there because they did this whole playing off of that 70s 80s riff of they had a, a fake band within the band called Pain for Pleasure, where they dressed up looking like Judas Priest, and they were, you know, devil worshippers or whatever, you, you know, mm -hmm. like the whole gag from the '80s and whatnot, and Iron Maiden. Yeah. Uh, you could you could tie that in easily. There, there's so much good music from from first album to last album. It, it, I think the thing about Sum Forty One is is they took a lot of what they loved and they tried to mimic it and expand upon it, and they did a really good job of that. So that's why the, a lot of it sounds like Blink Way Two, Green Day, mm -hmm. Iron Maiden. So I, I I don't know. I just think that some forty one they are technically a dad rock band. They're from the nineties. I'm a dad. I, yeah. I okay. I, I, I think I think if you're gonna go with a band, I'm up for Lincoln Park. Muse is great. Green Day is amazing. Blink okay. I, is okay. Amazing. So I just thought of three three bands that uh, okay. Um, there is one that will sell definitely to New York. Especially Ron and Bruce, um, Steel Panther. Steel Panther. They could definitely put, yes. do the Steel Panther band. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ron and Bruce would definitely uh, go in on that one. Okay, um, I, I I did think of uh, Green Day, American Idiot. Just do an American yes. Idiot pinball machine. That would be great. And the one, okay, I don't know why this has totally escaped us, but why has there never been talk about an Aussie pinball machine? I don't know. And that's what's funny is like when Venom was coming out and yeah. Ozzy was Ozzy showed up at that thing. But and we all assumed that it was going to be Ozzy's music in there. Yeah. Which and turned out to be a total gag. But Ozzy, like, why isn't there an Ozzy machine? I still don't know why there isn't a Pink Floyd machine. If you're going to start talking about Come like. Come on, slu snooze. Uh, still conceptual have, wise. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fine. I'm Pink Floyd. Yes, they sold a billion of them, but that'd be like the Eagles, you know, laughing point, fast. And way. I agree with you. Like, like Crazy Train is going to appeal to me a lot more than money. Yeah, but but concept wise, there's a lot there. Okay, but I okay, Ozzy should should have a machine. Okay, I am I, I am agree. on the bandwagon. Ozzy should have a machine. I agree. I'm starting. Ozzy the should have. I'm, st I'm starting the engine. So, do you do Ozzy or do you do Black Sabbath? You do Ozzy. Okay. Ooh, Oz, Oz, Ozzy sold way more as a solo artist than Black Sabbath. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Black Sabbath was like a springboard for a ton of careers. And then the people just never, you, you, Ozzy left. Well, yeah, yeah, then Ronnie, Ronnie James Dio Dio left. Yeah. yeah. Zach Wild. Um, I mean, there was multiple guitarists. That okay, was Zach Wild well. ever part of Black Sabbath or was he just Ozzy's guitarist? Maybe he was just Ozzy's guitarist. Cause he, cause was... they, ironically, the, uh, uh, the, um, the original guitarist that Ozzy started with was named Randy Rhodes. And, you know, there's the song flying high again. He actually died because he was high doing like loop the loops in a plane. Yeah. And then they had, they had, uh, another guy for a while, like JP something. Um, I just remember him cause he, he looked very unique. He was half uh, Asian. Uh, so he, he looked unique, especially for an eighties band. And was it uh, Tony Iommi? Is he the gentleman that? No, I think it was like, wasn't it JP or something? I can't remember. 
Um, Billy Ward, Geezer Butler, Ozzy oh, Osbourne. No, I, I think the guy immediately followed Randy Rhodes. There, there's a ton of people. It's funny. It's funny when you have when you go to Wiki and it's like it tells you like four members, and then literally under that it says list of Black Sabbath and Heaven and Hell members. Like oh, no, it's no, just no, the, no. I'm I'm just talking Ozzy Osbourne members. Yeah. What so. I'm saying though is there's a lot of people that that springboarded off of uh, Black Sabbath. Is all I yeah. was trying to say. Okay, so. Jake Lee. That that's what I was thinking of. So you had. Um, uh, Randy Rhodes died and then Jake Lee took over and I think he was only with him for like, uh, a, an album. Then I think, uh, uh, Zach Wilde came on board and yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. Holy crap. The list of people that have been in black Sabbath is oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Well, you, you get paid Yeah, and that's the bottom yeah. line, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, if you want a touring gig, that's definitely where you, where you go. But. Oh Yeah. Anywho, yeah, I agree with you. Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne should have had a pinball machine by now. Yep, I think there's still a pill there as well. I think if you're gonna, go oh, he, down it would rock, totally sell. It would totally sell. Yeah. So here's another point too. So so Gene Simmons said that there's no such thing as rock icons anymore, and you can't consider Nirvana one because they only did a couple albums, and and well, Gene's wrong. Have, <laughs> I agree. Gene's wrong. G- Gene's wrong. Uh, Nirvana single-handedly uh it, like there's pre-Nirvana and post-Nirvana. Yeah. Nirvana basically started all the gr- all the grunge stuff. Yeah. Like it's yeah, it, it it it's it's not even close. Not even close. And, and I I I remember that uh I mean there's a story that I I have no proof on but it was the uh David Coverdale from White Snake as soon as he heard Nirvana he's like, "Well, <laughs> we we had a good run." <laughs> Our career's over. I think every every gen- generation has a band, right? Like the Beatles inspired so many people. Yeah, and the Beatles and then, were sixty four to sixty nine. And then when you look at bands that made it successful, uh, there's Van Led Halen, Zeppelin. I felt I yeah. was going to say Van Z- Van Halen was very influential. We wouldn't have Pantera without them, yeah. and most of your metal would not have been there. Then Nirvana. Uh, after Nirvana, I think the problem is is we've had this discussion before. Is the music music industry has it's pivoted fragmented. so hard? Yeah, well, it's, it's, fragmented. it's fragmented because no no one's we don't we don't have and this is part of society's issue too. We don't have shared experiences anymore. Yeah, because everybody and and we're benefiting from this, right? I mean, that's the whole point of pinball. Pinball has thrived under this this hey, we have an interest in pinball, so we're breaking away and forming our own community. Yeah. So, so we definitely thrive and benefit from that. So there's benefits and detriments to it, but there are very few giant bands anymore. You could argue Taylor Swift would be one Maroon yeah. five would be one. You could argue even Rihanna for worldwide stuff. You could even argue bad bunny, but, yeah. um, people would know a Maroon five song. A lot of uh, very few people, outside of a certain demographic would recognize a bad bunny song. So I was listening to, if you've never listened to Finn McKenty, he's really, he's a really good a gentleman that kind of specializes in kind of punk rock from mm-hmm. about mid eighties up to this point. Like he's, he's actually got a pretty good finger on the pulse of what punk rock is nowadays. Yep. And he was talking about like, is rock dead? Like we hear this, like, that's what, that's what just Gene old- Simmons said, and I agree. It, I think it is. I think it is. It, so he's like, are we just old geezers staying on the front porch saying, like, get off my lawn? Uh, his point being, I, I really like this concept. So he he brought up art. Mm-hmm. Art was kind of stale till about the mid-1800s, I want to mm-hmm. say is where it was at. Then you had an explosion of artists. They were doing mm-hmm. different things. Pablo Picasso, you know, Jackson Pollock all this creativity and everything. But then all of a sudden it kind of felt like everything that could be done with art was done with art. But there was a good 70 year span of where it was just, mm-hmm. everything was new and fresh. Right. And, but ever since then, like art hasn't died off. Obviously art is still around. It's right. still very appreciated. It's very loved. Uh, but there's no like art icons, right? Like we still talk Pablo Picasso. We still, still talk Van Gogh. Right. Um, I mean, you could argue Banksy, but I feel like Banksy's more of a. It's a, It's because of his political stance. 
We, it's we, a brand more than we, it is. We art, have right? brands more. And even Picasso became a brand. Yeah. Like and you so, look at his early stuff and you could tell he was an amazing artist, but he became a brand. Correct. But his, his juxtaposition was like, if you do that with rock, like rock mm -hmm. has been around, it's had a really good about sure. 70 year run from the sixties. Like if you start with Elvis, who you could probably say was the start of rock and roll yeah, he, he, and yeah, the Beatles perfected rock. it in the sixties or it gave it a really good bump in a direction. Mm -hmm. But then we started fragmenting from everywhere. Like you mm -hmm. got Ramones that started punk. You've got, you've got ACDC that did more rock, hard yeah. rock. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so we it's all kind of been done like metal like rock has is kind of got to the last breath of well everything okay. that's fresh and new but it doesn't mean it's dead but it still means that i would argue maybe, that it's not dead but it's dead as a massive selling mainstream product because yes. there are new ba new bands out there there are the, even there's a i have a friend who's really into like uh, European metal and I I've heard some of the new metal coming out of there and it's, it's very uh, awesome. Like it's kind of like the iron maiden has that symphonic, uh, metal sound. It's not the scream metal, but it has that, the high, the, the fast metal. And it usually has a, a female voice cause they can hit higher note, uh, uh notes and it's really good, yeah. but it's not mass. It's not mass, uh, consumption like it used to be. Because yeah. when, when I grew up, there were, not kidding, there were four stations, ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox. And don't even, the, the PBS stuff didn't count. Yeah. That's it. And so we, we all consume the same stuff. We don't do that anymore. No, we don't. And, and it, honestly, I think Taylor Swift has done an amazing job of be able to break boundaries of, we live in a day and age, like you said, everyone kind of has their entertainment, right? right? Taylor Swift's the only one that I feel like has somehow invaded everyone's entertainment, right? Yeah. Whether it's her music, whether it's mm -hmm. her love life, whatever it may be. She, she's uh, been able to, yeah, to maintain some sort of connection. So yeah. there really should be a Taylor Swift pinball machine. There probably there should. should. But I guess my point being, I just feel like rock and roll, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I feel like we've kind of perfected that and, mm -hmm. There's still gonna be great artists that come out. There's still great artists that are producing stuff. Um, I mean, but, if you but if they're not gonna be Led Zeppelin. They're not. No, they're not they're gonna not. be uh, e even okay. Even for everything you two did, they're not the Beatles. Well, I think the other part part too is is there's just almost no money to be made in music anymore. Unless there, there isn't performing. Right. There's not. There's not there writing. Isn't, there isn't performing. correct. Yeah. Correct. Like I don't know if do you know who Dragon Force is you heard that song through the fire and flames no so it was huge back in the 2000s because it's it's very like 80s-esque metal like okay i i think they call it like power metal over in europe anyhow. okay uh it was on guitar hero it was in guitar hero 3 and it was considered it was the hardest song to play on there okay but those guys blew up substantially because of that the it's called through the fire and flames if you haven't heard it okay Go give it a listen. It's definitely okay, worth it. send me a link and I'll listen to it. Yeah, definitely. You'll love it. If, okay, if you now, like Iron Maiden and stuff like that, you're going to love this song. We did kind of go down the rabbit hole onto music themes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. So j just quick couple minutes. Other themes that would be good. Sorry. Like, let I, me finish my story though. So oh, the, oh, the I'm point sorry. being, I, I thought you were done. Sorry. Sorry. No. So my point being is, is so this massively successful song, a band that's done very well for themselves, they got paid $3,000. Mm-hmm for through the fire and flames for guitar hero three mm -hmm. when they were talking to the guitarist he says three thousand dollars might sound like a decent amount of money but then you've got to split that he's like there's five members in the band yeah it, no it's nothing we had a manager we had the record label he said there was probably about 10 different people that got a cut yeah split three thousand dollars 10 ways we no maybe got 300 bucks legit nothing however jet the band jet got jet, their breakthrough yeah. from an i uh, like an ipod commercial yeah the dun 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 sure. dun and they got their big break so that's not necessarily a bad move for marketing yeah. now whether they whether they can sell concert tickets that's another thing but it's not but i agree i agree with you you have to be a performer if you're going to make yes. music you're going to have to be a performer yep. uh, my chemical romance that's why they've done so well is because they were able to take conceptual albums and then 
apply them to a live action. Okay, legitimately, experience. the first time I saw like the Black Parade, though, I saw it without sound. <laughs> and yeah. I imagined a completely different sound coming out of that band. I, I so, legit thought it was going to be like some sort of speed metal. Yeah. It's such a good album. Yeah. If you haven't checked out that one, that's not one. Okay. Sorry. So what was your question? Okay. Uh, well, okay. We, we went down the rabbit hole of music. Yes. Okay. And obviously music pins, we know sell and do great in a home environment. So yeah. The question was themes. Okay. Now we did, I talked about super Mario brothers. I've talked about that other stuff. A couple other things like, um, Andor would be an awesome one. And by the way, if, if you're a Star Wars fan and you haven't watched the Andor series, you definitely need to watch that. It's it's along with Rogue One. It's my favorite stuff coming out of Star Wars. Um, yeah. what, other things that could be... I, I'm, are we talking like movie themes? Are we talking... She just said your yeah. dream theme. So just yeah. pretty much... That's why I gave you top two. I, so. I, I dream old, so... I, 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 I probably go with more of the nostalgia themes that I, things that I thought were cool when I was 14. So we're almost at an hour and a half. Let's hurry. Okay. Do, let's right. get these last two questions. The yes. third one's just, okay. How do we feel about a Brene Brown pinball machine? Yeah, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go for an Oprah machine. Um, <laughs> you know, you get a machine, you get a machine. Uh, just see so anybody doesn't know. <laughs> Brene Brown is, uh, this is a standing joke. Cause she like talks about her feelings. I don't think there's a I actually have read I'm trying to think what book it is. Something okay. about being vulnerable. And that okay. was hey, if if uh if you're not vulnerable, I, I can't be vulnerable, vulnerable in pinball. I'm trying to defend. Okay. Okay, okay. Keep in mind. Okay, and the final question, which is actually a legitimate question. Okay. All right. What would you like to see happen in the hobby in the next three to five years? Ooh. Um I would like to, it to solidify a little bit. What I'd really like to see is some of these other companies step up and become more of a, I don't want to say a legitimate competition with Stern, but to be closer to Stern's production and their level. Yeah. The, the challenge is I fear that the market is kind of saturated right now. And I'm concerned that we went through this crazy nostalgia period over 14 years from 2010 to 2014. And yeah. I wonder if we're set up for a little bit of a drop off. I think we are. So I think we are, we're getting there where we, it, it was artificially boosted by the pandemic where it went kind of crazy and the prices went up. And sadly I've said that I think that really hurt JJP because they jump their prices up so fast, so much that uh, unless you're a hardcore fan of a JJP game, you're not going to buy it new. Like I would buy a Elton John for eight thousand five hundred, nine thousand, you know, kind of in the Sturm Premium range. Yeah, I would buy that, but I'm not going to buy it for twelve thousand five hundred. Uh, I think there. So what I would hope for would be more of a solidification of CGC stepping up their production, Jersey Jack finding a more accessible price point for everybody, um, and people producing games that are similar to Stern quality and reliability. That So I don't feel pigeonholed to avoid certain manufacturers because of their reliability issues. That's yeah. what I wish. I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a cooling down effect. There's going to be a few companies that are going to disappear and there you're going to see it cool off to probably more what it was pre pandemic where you're going to have a lot of machines for uh, used machines that you can buy and sell for around $4,500, $5,000. And uh, I wonder how that's going to affect. I think it's going to cool down the manufacturing because if people can't buy machines and artificially and fl flip them for what they paid for them, then you're going to see people cooling down and looking at used games more than they are you new. Yeah. My hope is, um, I guess I've been kind of paralleling what's going on right now with the nineties and I don't think it's as dramatic. And the reason I say that is because in the nineties we had Gottlieb, Bally Williams, data East and like Capcom. 
I, we and, had and we were slaves to arcades, really. Yeah. Like we, really, we were we had... totally dependent on what was on location. Yeah. So when the arcade died, pinball was on life support. Yes. Um, I, I just want to see like, same with you solidification. I want to make sure that like pinball can weather what we're going because right. there's going to be a decline. There's just, it, it's not pinball's fault. It's the fact that the economy's rough. I mean, we're not going to go political or anything here, but it's just, you can see the trends and people, people's wallets are very much strained and they'd rather buy food than a pinball machine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or pay bills, Ta which I don't Taking on. my kids out to fast food. It's 60 to 70 bucks for a yeah. family of five. It is. And that, that's not political. That's economic. And that's what pinball is, is economic. Yeah. And, and usually when, you, when times are tough and economically, the first thing I go are, are the, pinball machines, the jet skis, the, the, mm -hmm. the Rolexes, you, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's economy one oh one. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I see pinball in a really good spot right now, um, to weather the storm. Uh, I, I do see numbers are going to deflate. Um, but other than that, I just think overall it's going to, uh, I hope for it to just the quality of games that are being built right now st still happen. I feel like we're in a really good spot where the games really, when I, when we first started doing loser kid, this was five years ago. Um, Iron Maiden, I don't think had been released yet or maybe it had been released. Um, yeah, but I what, felt what, like, yeah, what, what's, what were the games that were hot then? But think of before Iron Maiden, we had, yeah. Deadpool, but if you weren't around when Deadpool was released, and maybe that actually came out after Iron Maiden, it, it did not. Deadpool do super well. No, it didn't. Um, but really, I was more of like, well, why buy a Stern for even a used price was about forty five hundred the cheapest. Mm -hmm. Granted, pros at that point were high fives, brand mm -hmm. new in box. Um, when I can get a Bally Williams for two grand, and this is a nineties. Johnny Mnemonic, Judge mm -hmm. Dredd, Fishtails, you know, it wasn't Whitewater Monster, not Monster Bash, Medieval Madness, Attack from Mars. Mm -hmm. Whitewaters were still lower, but they, anywho. They were still accessible. Being, yeah. Yes, they were still accessible. My point being is, is um, I just feel like uh, Stern Games, since the release of Elwyn Games, have elevated, mm -hmm. and I would prefer to own a modern game than I would have Bally Williams. Yes. I would rather spend than what was it? 9,500 bucks or it was less yeah. than that for Godzilla premium for me, but I would rather spend that much money than on a medieval madness. And don't get me wrong. I love medieval madness. It's a great game. Yeah. You're but, getting into a little bit like owning a, you know, people talk about, I'd love to have a donkey Kong machine. Yeah. And I'm like, actually you don't. And I'll tell you why, because what happens is it's great eye candy and it looks cool and you play it and you realize that this game was meant to be fun for 90 seconds. Yeah. It's not meant to be fun for a long period of time. Yeah. And in many ways, I, now I still like the nineties games. I, the, the remakes I have, I like them and they're fun because my kids still like playing them, but it is not the same depth of rules that a Godzilla has, that a Rush has, you know, everything that yeah. Raymond put into the rules. I, I'm still finding new things in the rule sets. I'm even messaging Raymond saying, okay, explain this to me. I'm not figuring this out. And it's like, oh, you do that instead of that. Oh, okay. It's different. But that's not the level in Medieval Madness. The Medieval Madness is shoot the ramp. Yeah. Now that's it. Well, and that's the thing too, is I feel like, we really live in a cool day and age. Like I, I know we've talked about Venom hasn't done great in numbers and I do feel bad because I, I feel like Eddie's a great designer and, and these games are pretty mm -hmm. awesome and took a risk, really took a risk. Honestly, honestly, if Venom had released 10 years ago, huge, I think it would have been, it would have been a, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, gangbusters. However, I, I still think, think it's going to do it. it you're going to, see like pre venom and post venom because they're trying different things with insider connected. Yes. But my point being is from 2000 Stern 
like literally year 2000 mm -hmm. to maybe 2016 yeah i could probably count on one hand the games that people just absolutely love from stern you've got lord Until of the 2016 Rings. probably about or yeah 2016 so 2000 to 2016 yes well i could count a lot i i would i would say to 2000 to 2010 you're talking like tron like pre-tron there's like four it was games. tron lord of the rings and simpsons pinball party probably okay. there yeah, might but, but be if you go like after that i mean you've got a lot of good acd you got acdc metallica. metallica um i'm saying they're good though but there was nothing like like okay those two are great it's not it's not game. the same level of you have walking dead in there it's not the same level of code though that they have now is that what you're that's what i'm at? trying to say okay that's what i'm trying to say i'm trying to say like every game that comes out now i can be like yeah i could see owning that game for a long there's, time yeah but there's so much variety it's like well why would mm -hmm. i own a venom when jaws just came out or you know what i'm saying like right i can wait till the next one it, it feels it just feels like pinball has really became become like oh all the games are great mm -hmm. where it used to be like oh austin powers yeah cool <laughs> oh roller coaster tycoon mm -hmm. i CSI. i still wish shrek were a good game i own shrek and i i could not, not get rid of that faster fast enough it was just not fun it's a decent game no it's not but it's one of those games that <laughs> it's, so it's, my, a, my it's cousin, a great theme it's a great theme my cousin who lives in town owns that game and i didn't read the rule set and i i beat the, the game yeah. on my first try and i was like oh that yeah. was that was kind of easy that was a game yeah yeah it's a game that exists mm -hmm. but okay we're at an hour and a half all right yeah did, did we cover the what was the last one it wasn't Brene brown no oh yeah we're pinballs yeah yeah we got it we got it where, where we think we're, we're good i i would say we're cautiously well we're optimistic. We think it's actually going for a downturn, but we hope for better. Yeah, I, 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 I hope for it won't crash like it did in the '90s. But I agree yeah. with you. We were dependent on arcades. Now we're dependent on home. I think financially, even if we're in a economic depression like we are right now, financially we are better off now oh, yeah. than we were in the '90s. Yes. Uh, um, I think people have more disposable income now mm -hmm. than they did then. I could be wrong and, yeah. and maybe um, anyhow that okay. was my point so uh cross fingers so so we, we're saying john wick here next week yeah and i think that john wick will be it, it okay it's going to be a theme that people are going to be excited about so it's either john wick I, I okay here's my prediction it's john wick i find this interesting though so john wick or we have heard and this has been said on another podcast so i'm not I don't feel like I'm revealing any information, but a remake is being made this year. It's going to be the very first Spike 3 game mm -hmm. is what we're hearing. And the remake is a reimagined version of Metallica is what I'm hearing. Yeah, and that's been, that's been the rumor for a long time. Correct. But I find interesting yeah. is John Wick's next. Supposedly John Borg's doing it. Yeah. But if that's the case, do you really think they would release john wick and metallica they'd replace i know it has nothing to do like designer really doesn't define theme yeah i i don't think it's that i i, I wouldn't overthink that uh, no, i probably wouldn't either but I, I do find I, it interesting i do find it interesting yeah. all john borg's games are not in production right now that which everything is, at Sot Stern, which is Ninja Turtles has been discontinued. Rush has been discontinued. Yep. Uh, I'm still surprised that Rush was discontinued when it did, because it's, th there was still demand for it. Yes, it's really weird. At one game of the year, yeah, and then they're like, and it was and already it was already canceled. I think what at one game of the year. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I got to pull this up really quick. I'm just just really quickly. I'm pulling up John Borg. So so Rush was his last one. It's really uh -huh. weird to think too. Rush was in 2022, mm -hmm. and it was the beginning of 2022. Yeah. Like I remember, uh, we had uh, Ed Robertson on because he worked mm -hmm. with that from Bare Naked Ladies, and and it was like the end of January, beginning of February. I think is when we had him on. Yeah, I think there people it, are still waiting on their expression lighting kits. So Rush, Teenage Mutant Turtles, mm -hmm. Monsters. 
which is the year that, that I remember literally when Monsters came out. That was the first episode we ever recorded, Loser Kid. Mm-hmm. He's talking about Monsters. Uh, before that, Guardians of the Galaxy. Are they still making Guardians? No. I, I swore they did a final oh, call. They, and they then they were like joking. Call, I think they ran like one other one. Okay. So that's that's probably canceled as well. Aerosmith hasn't been made for years. Kiss no. hasn't been made, uh-huh. made for years. Walking Dead hasn't been made for years. I mean, seriously, we're back to Tron and Metallica days. This is this is more than a decade ago. Yeah. Yeah, there is literally no John Borg game being built right now. So I, I don't think it'd be a shocker if, if they did he released them. John Wick and, and, and Metallica. And I'm still holding out hope for a vault edition of Lord of the Rings. It would sell 5,000. So buy, buy Metallica and and show your support for Metallica. And maybe it'll, I, I bet this is a test run to say, it is, it, are these viable? I've options? actually never owned a Metallica, but I would be interested in a Metallica. Yeah. So, all right, man. Hey. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us, we are Lose a Kid Pinball Podcast at gmail.com. We're on all the socials. Uh, usually I've been linking in, in the show description. You just click on that. It'll take you all of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, X, uh, now threads. Uh, we're all at loser kid pinball. If you want some sweet swag, hit us, you know, loser kid pinball podcast. No, sorry. Silver ball swag slash loser kid pinball and check it out. Neil Shelton now owns the place. So well, thanks will for, you know, leaving for, the impression for, for and your support. Us. Absolutely. Yeah, man. And, and helping us all, all these podcasters and, Thanks, Neil, for picking up that torch. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, I think I think that does it. Um, give us your last word, Scott. Okay. Uh, Bruce, go give Ron a big hug.